week long, we've been focusing on New York's tech scene in Silicon Alley. Today, we look at a company that's used technology to revolutionize the grocery business in the metro New York area. Our Nicole Lappin is in New York with more. So, Nicole, can this work? That is the question. Well, they hope so. That is the answer according to them, Emily. And while most see it as just another grocery store, it actually used technology to completely disrupt the way people shop for food in and around the city. With 90% of the market share, I got a behind-the-scenes look with the CEO, Jason Ackerman, to see if the old saying is true. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. You've been at this thing for 10 years. You need to remind me, yes. Why? Why 10 years? Why wouldn't you expand like so many other of your competitors? This is a very customer-centric business, and the model is a bit complicated. It's a huge industry, and we've just been highly focused on getting the model right. People think that the internet absolves you of the right of having to be a great food retailer, and it doesn't. So we've been focused on just building a great fresh food business that competes against Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and the other players in the marketplace. Are you scared of Amazon? No. I respect Amazon, but I'm not scared of Amazon. You can't ship a steak through the mail and expect people to buy it on a day-to-day -day basis. We are about delivering from farm to consumer the best quality fresh food, produce, meats, fish, prepared foods. And as Amazon doesn't do it, she can't do that as a national model. It's a, it's a localized business. So we hand roll about 2,000 croissants a day in this little room. We make around 150 different types of products out of the bakery. You know, we make it all to order. We take orders and make the product. Uh, so compared to a store, stuff is not sitting around. One part of the model is we have probably 75% less inventory than a retailer would have. And when you think about fresh food, you know, you don't want inventory because it goes bad quickly. So the whole model is around rotating that product faster than a store can, so it's fresher for the consumer. Kind of like a Dell model, make it to order. So the more that we control our own production, the closer we can bring the product to the customer in a short of a cycle from production to, to, to the home. You know, we're in here, we're making probably 700 different types of prepared meals. Everything from basic chicken fingers to uh, value, you know, broccoli. Um, Prepared meals, semi-prepared meals, it's a big part of our business, it's a prepared food business. We hand cut, we've got around 250 to 300 types of cheeses we sell, plus about 150 types of deli products. So in here, we custom cut everything. What's the temperature in here? Uh, 34 degrees. Yes. <laughs> a store is established for consumer comfort not food comfort. We build our environment that's best for food, not best for shoppers. You see this sticker? Every um, person who works uh, has their own personal ID, ID number 107, and we put it on everything. So if you have any complaint about our product, you tell us what number, then we know what person worked on it so we can coach and work on making sure that the quality is where we want it to be. You can see after all the, the product is, is produced, it goes into the bagging area. The boxes are sealed and they get sent down to here. Here we'll sort through 60, 70,000 boxes a day. We'll come through here. And we're past the days of web van. What about when people have nightmares of that? Well, uh, it's hard to live with the ghosts of the past. There's no doubt that web van went out with a monstrous bang that uh, made the industry, people question the industry. But this is a huge opportunity. If you look at England, where 3% of the entire country is now being online. If you take that to the United States, that would be a $30 billion online business in the food. And we're going to own the majority of that. It's just a matter of time. And Nicole, a lot of people have been skeptical about this kind of business since the nightmare of Webvan. I mean, has that made it any harder for Fresh Direct to raise money to get support out there? Not Fresh Direct, Emily, but Ackerman tells me that VCs in general are really spooked by the Webvan debacle. He says that he started with family seed money, so they own most of the company themselves. But he sees those gun-shy investors as just adding to his own competitive advantage. He built the company without a lot of outside funding, but he he knows that potential competitors out there can't. So he thinks that the bitter web van deja vu is actually an advantage to him when he does expand. And by the way, the next city will be rolled out next week.